Hey guys, welcome back to the show. I want to take a minute to thank our sponsor for today's episode. I would like to thank Nutrafol for supporting the show. Nutrafol is the number one dermatologist hair growth supplement brand and is physician formulated with 100% drug-free ingredients. Nutrafol's newest vegan formula is designed for women 18 and up who live a plant-based lifestyle and are experiencing any type of hair thinning. Some of the most common root causes of hair thinning can be metabolism, stress, nutrition, and Nutrafol supplement is designed to target all of those things. Go to Nutrafol.com and enter promo code INSANE to save $10 off your first month subscription plus free shipping on every order. Enjoy today's episode. So I guess my first question is, is what like what would you consider yourself? Like do you consider yourself like would because Rachel and I were talking about this the other day, like a medium? I do think that I'm a medium. Okay. I think that I'm a natural born medium. I think it's genetic. I yeah. think Ray has it. My mom mm-hmm. has it. My grandmother had it. But I think that everybody pushes it to the side because in the past, we didn't have proof of right. everything that we were talking about. So it was kind of like faux pas to say that you saw a ghost or something happened. Yeah. Yeah. And now I feel validated because all of the stories that I used to tell are happening to other people. And it's on TV, on paranormal, caught on camera. Right. You know? Well, it's definitely real too. Like, you know, while there's good in the world, there's definitely evil. Oh, 100%. Yeah. I think anyone that doesn't believe in ghosts or spirits, like... I'll tell you what I think of people who don't believe in ghosts or spirits. They are one-dimensional people Mm -hmm. who have put a lid on their box of knowledge that don't want to know anything else, that they they already have their feelings and knowledge of something that they don't know anything about, and they don't want to know anything about it. But I am here to tell you that ghosts are real. They definitely are real. They're definitely real. Well, that's what I was thinking too is like I think that you have to – be open to it and like and not open to it in a bad way but you have to believe that there's something out there and kind of be open to that world and realm I feel like to have things almost come to you and happen right in a way like if you don't believe it and you just completely shut it off like you said I feel like you're just not gonna you it, it's the people that don't want to know about it are never gonna yeah. know about it mm-hmm. but the people that are interested in it are gonna look for for things and look for signs right. and they're going to start things. S- noticing things yep. that other people just don't even pay any, no yeah. attention to. So what was your first ever experience? Okay. When I was a little girl, mm-hmm. I used to see faces doing like a, a, a going across my wall, almost like a film strip. And my mother used to tell me that 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 it was the car lights and the curtains, mm-hmm. but I I remember the faces. But when I was like maybe nine, mm-hmm. I would I had a canopy bed. I was in my bed and I saw my uncle Morris. His face was in the canopy and he smiled at me mm-hmm. and he winked, and. I felt like overwhelming love, but then I I got scared and I ran into my parents' bedroom and the next morning we found out that my Uncle Morris had passed away. Wow. So that was the first time, you know, I didn't even really understand it. It just kind of like freaked me out. Mm -hmm. But when I was still around that age, about that age, I started having dreams about these two women Ethel Rubinstein and Rosie McGurkey. Ethel Rubinstein, she was in the Holocaust, but she didn't die in the Holocaust. And she showed me, she actually has a tombstone, and that was something she was very proud of because a lot of the people that died in the Holocaust did not get tombstones. Rosie McGurkey was also in the Holocaust not because she was Jewish, for something that she did, and I still don't know what she Mm -hmm. did. I know she smoked a lot of cigarettes, and she had like this nervous twitch with her mouth. Nobody in my life knows who these two women are, Mm -hmm. 
But when I was younger, they used to tell me lots of things, you know, that would freak me out because they would come true. But then as I got older, I suppressed it. Yeah. And then um, when I was 16, I was in a really, not 16, I'm sorry. When I was 19, I was in a really bad car accident Mm -hmm. and I had severe brain injuries. I was in the hospital for a really long time. I broke my back. I was a mess. And the day that I went home, um, I had to get a special bed for me to lay in. And I I was not not in my bedroom. It was my brother's old room. And I was laying there and I saw the door open up and I thought it was going to be my cat. And it was my uncle, Bobby, Mm -hmm. who had passed away when I was 16. And he and I were very, very close. And he sat down on my bed like a solid as clear as you like, look are. like a human. Yeah. Right. He sat down on my bed. I felt a weight on my bed, like he was sitting on my bed. Mm-hmm. And he communicated with me, but not by talking. He just told me that he was what he was watching over me. He was he wanted me to know that he yeah. was there. So after that, I would have lots of different things. I never, ever tried to summons anything because I was afraid right. of what would happen. Like if you, you know, I knew right. about Ouija boards. I knew that they were scary. They could do a lot of things. So I never wanted to do any of that And stuff. things were already coming to you without you trying. Right. So. I didn't have to try. Right. So I never wanted to summons anything that I didn't want. Yeah. So as I got older, I got married and... um I, my ex-husband thought that I was insane Mm -hmm. and we moved into my old house. I used to see things, but he didn't care. So we moved into a new house, brand new. We built it, but it was on old, old land Mm -hmm. and there were Indians there and there were lots, lots and lots of energy right where my house was. And right after we moved in, my oldest son, Michael, was, it was the beginning of kindergarten and he had a friend over and his mother came to pick him up and I went to open the door and then we walked into the kitchen and every single cabinet was opened. Now I've seen it on TV and mm-hmm. I'm validated, but for years, no one believed me except for uh, Michael's friend's right. mother, who still believes me to this day. And it was a bonding experience because I didn't know her prior to that. Yeah. But um, while I was living in that house, I was getting all kinds of crazy crazy things did when you guys first moved in did you like have any feelings or not yet yeah oh yeah and my ex-husband when he was the home nothing would happen okay when he would go out of town everything would happen one of the first times he went out of town i put a load of laundry in and it kept stopping and the actual door to the washing machine would be lifted up Mm mm-hmm I would go to put the washing machine down to to start it again, and the kitchen sink would turn on. I'd go into the kitchen to turn it off. I mean, all this crazy was stuff game, yeah. was happening with the water. I told my ex-husband. He thought it was like some glitch that the builder, you know, has right. to fix. This would happen every time he went out of town. The garage door would go up by itself. Yeah. Like it was so scary living there with just my kids. My uh, my kids would sleep on the floor in my bedroom, mm-hmm. even though they all had their own rooms, because they would see things. Right, Michael, my oldest, when he started school, he used to talk about the Casper kid that came to talk to him when he's in his bedroom. Sometimes he would even buckle him in into the car. It was crazy. Yeah. One time I went to leave and the I was in the car in the garage. The garage door started going up and then it slammed down and I thought there was something wrong with it. 
I got out of the car. I went to go into my house and I was locked out of my house. There was nobody else in the house. Mm -hmm. I never locked the garage door, but that was the beginning of a new thing where every time I left a room, the door would shut and lock behind me. Even outside, if I went outside, the, we had a special kind of lock that had a, a key to it. Mm-hmm. You had to lock it with a key from the inside. I would go out to the to get the kids from the bus stop, and I'd come back, and the front door would be locked. My ex-husband didn't believe anything I said that was happening mm-hmm. and thought that I was insane. And then one time I went downstairs and I was, I was having all kinds of feelings and crying and everything. And he came down and there was a mist in the basement, an actual mist. Yeah. And that was the only thing he actually saw. We ran upstairs. He called BGE. He thought that there was some gas leak. Right. No, it wasn't a gas leak. It was my friend Perry. I knew that it was him. He had passed away. He had committed suicide. He um, started coming to me and telling me lots of things. He was from Chicago. He told me that Sammy Sosa... And I didn't never heard, I I had no idea who Sammy Sosa was. Yeah. Okay. I have no um, sports knowledge at all. Right. I know that we are the Orioles and the Ravens. Yeah, that's it. The end. Okay. Sammy Sosa was about to be a name that I was going to hear. And I called my father. I was telling my father about this dream. And my father said, Sammy Sosa? He, he played for the Chicago Cubs. Mm-hmm. And that year, he won like something. I can't even remember what it was, yeah. but because it, it was 20 some years ago. Right. And I'm not a Cubs fan, but Sammy Sosa became like a name that everybody knew. Mm-hmm. But Perry told me that that was going to happen. Right. So sometimes I get things like that. But sometimes I get things that like, I'll get people that I don't even know who they are. I don't know what you want. I don't know what I'm trying, what am I supposed to do with this? Right. You know what I mean? This was happening a lot. And um, that's when I met a knot. Mm-hmm. You know a knot. Yes. She's also a psychic medium. She, um, she could see things also that I was telling her that I could see. We kind of were in sync with a lot of the same mm-hmm. things. And um, I was, she's like one of my favorite people that I ever met because it was the first time that somebody not only understood what I was talking about, but like Believe really understood yeah. what I was talking right. about. And did it make you feel alone too? Yeah, with yeah, yeah. Right. Because even my parents, everybody, even though they know that I can do it, they all all question me and doubt yeah. me. You know what I mean? Well, it's easy too. If you aren't experiencing something the same way as somebody else is, it's hard to relate to it. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, my my house, that my old house when I was married was super, super haunted. And I do believe it was, um, it had a lot to do with the beginning of the end of my marriage. My marriage mm-hmm. did end in that house. And I had to move out of that house. I do want to backtrack and tell you that your friend Ray was very, very scared mm-hmm. of that house. Yeah. Okay. She she never liked it. Right. She never wanted to sleep alone, but she did learn to sleep alone. Okay. So I got divorced. The last night that I was at that house mm-hmm. and I was packing everything up, I was in the basement and I was just putting things in boxes And I got this like really overwhelming feeling like I wanted to burst out and cry. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden I saw something like go by in the door, Mm -hmm. like something ran by real fast in the door. So I just like my hair stood up right? and I just sat there and I stared at the door and I saw this Indian kid. He, he just like, 
presented himself to mm-hmm. me. I think it was like he wanted me to know, he knew I was leaving, right. that I'm not crazy. Mm-hmm. I'm the kid that was playing all these games. You right. know what I mean? Yeah. So that was another validation for me right. personally. Then we moved into my new house, just me and the kids. And when we got into that house, things followed me a hundred percent things followed me yeah and ray was again scared to sleep in her room she actually was away at her dad's one weekend Mm -hmm. and my boyfriend chris was there and all of a sudden we heard upstairs like a thud something moving we ran upstairs and at the top of the steps was a pink little pink suitcase that Ray used to have in her closet. Mm -hmm. I don't know how, but it like rolled its way out of her room and into the middle of the hallway and Mm -hmm. was at the top of the steps. Yeah. It was freaky. Uh And if Chris wasn't there, I never would have done what I did, which was I opened the suitcase. Yeah. And he and I both felt like this, like something flew out of that suitcase. Right. It like hit us Mm -hmm. both. I don't know what it was, but I saged my house. Mm -hmm. I gave away the suitcase. I gave it to Goodwill. I I saged it. I don't want to give anybody (laughs) anything. I just didn't want it in my house. But um, I I have, um, since then, I've learned how to deal more because I started to have more experiences when I got my store. My store was in a house built in 1773. It was owned by a man, Mr. Reister of Reisterstown. His son owned the house. He was a doctor and he used the house as a hospital. Mm -hmm. That's the history of the house, okay? It's also built, um, right behind it is where the Buffalo Soldiers are buried along with a lot of other dead people from the 1600s, right. the Harrimans from the Harriman house, you know, people that made up this entire area. So I got the store. I'm super excited. I'm working on it with my friends. We're painting at night. My first experience was I was sanding the ceiling. And when I started to sand the ceiling, I felt a booted foot bang on the ceiling from above. Mm -hmm. So we went upstairs, we looked around, we didn't see anything. You know, that was the first experience, but that's when I started to like really have issues. Yeah. I had things start flying off of the shelves. Uh, I had this one girl come in And I do think that the ghost in this house became very protective of me because when she was there, she was talking about, I was going to do a flea market. She wanted to know if she could put flyers on my table. And I said, sure. And while she was standing there, this vase flew off of the shelf and hit her in the back of the head. And... (laughs) I, I didn't know what to say. I apologized. I told her the place was haunted. Yeah. Um, that, that same girl, when I, I, the day of the flea market, I had gotten sick and I was late at the flea market. And when I got there, she had like covered my table with all of her stuff. And then when I got there, I said, I'm here. You need to move your stuff. We ended up getting into like a fight mm-hmm. that was really unnecessary. Yeah. But it was almost like the ghost of, uh, of my store like knew. Bad new- yeah. yeah. I went in there on my birthday and the candles, I, I used to sell candles. They were lit on my birthday. These sample candles were lit. Well, I remember when we would go there when we were younger, we would always smell Oh, um, butterscotch. Yes, the butterscotch. You were I there remember. with I, the Yeah, I remember That's so right. many of like the little things. Right. Yeah. There was the um, the room we were painting it yellow, mm-hmm. and it the the color was called butterscotch. Oh, that's interesting. And then we started talking about the ghosts, 
And then we all started smelling butterscotch. Right. Right. Your mother came. It was the original um, fireplace Mm -hmm. where they used to cook and do things. It was was a very, very haunted store. Yeah. But I, one morning I used to enter through the back and then I would go to the front and unlock the front door and put the, the flag in. One morning I entered through the back. I walked out, unlocked the front door, put my flag in, walked back in, and there was a girl standing there in jeans and a blouse. I mean, she looked like a regular Mm -hmm. modern day girl. And I said, oh my God, you scared me. How'd you get in? And she said, oh, I just went through the door. And I said, oh, I I didn't even see you. And then she just turned around and she walked upstairs upstairs. And upstairs, someone else sold antiques upstairs. Okay. And I have multiple pictures of when, you know, during the night when we were doing things, getting the store ready and scary things were happening, I would take pictures and I have pictures of ghosts coming down the steps, nurse in nurse uniforms, helping soldiers down the steps, a whole family sitting on a sofa. There's a dog in the in pictures that showed up in multiple pictures. I mean, they're real. I didn't put them there. Right. They were there. But um, that girl went upstairs, and then, like, later in the day, I never saw her go back down. Later in the day, this couple came in, and they went upstairs, and then they came back down, and the man, the, the woman was freaked out, and she left. And the man came down, and he said, um is this place haunted? And I said, oh, yeah, it's pretty haunted. And he said, because uh, will you come upstairs with me? <laughs> he was scared. Yeah. So we went upstairs and we went into this room because he said that he heard people whispering in this one room. And we went back into that room. And then he turned to me and he said, is your name Laurie? And I said, yeah. And he said, oh, somebody just whispered that to me. And then he got freaked out and he ran downstairs. Oh my gosh. Later on that day, when we were leaving, you know, I was locking up. Chris came to pick me up. As we were leaving, we both heard from upstairs a woman that sounded like my mother saying, Lar, Lar, like, Wanting to know, are you here? Right. Which made me wonder, what are they going to do when I leave? Is yeah. it like a party? Are they yeah. waiting for me to leave? So later on, a, uh, a while later at my store, early in the day, I had opened up the front door and I saw an undertaker, probably from the 1700s, standing there with his arms folded behind his back, you know, just waiting. He had a black hat and blonde hair, real skinny, very tall. I knew exactly who he was. And I knew that he was waiting for something. And like I said, this house used to be a hospital. Well, later on in the day, Chris had come. He didn't like to come to my store often because he would always get sick, like physically throw up really it made him really sick like just walking in walking in the energy in my yeah. store made him sick wow he came in um i don't remember why didn't stay long went to leave and as he left i saw uh what looked like a witch following behind it looked like the witch from snow white in a black hooded cape, Mm -hmm. hunched over an old lady, follow behind him. I, through the window, Mm -hmm. I ran out the front door to see who, what is that thing? And I didn't see it. She was gone. Then later on in the evening, Chris had gone home. I was going to lock up the store and the, the phone rang. I answered the phone and it was just static and it was like I could hear something in the background, but I I kept saying, I can't hear you. I can't hear you. And I hung up. It it rang again. Now, this is still at my store. 
It rang like three times. Every time I answered it, I could not hear what the person was trying to say. All of the sudden, I heard things happening upstairs. I got this feeling. I was in the middle of like cashing out the cash register. You know, I had like this system that I did at the end of the night. I had this feeling that I needed to get out of that store. I needed to leave. There was something in there that I didn't want any parts of. So I just left everything the way it was. I locked up. I got in my car. I still felt real weird. Like I felt like something was watching me leave. And then I stopped for gas and I I couldn't shake this feeling that I was being followed by something. And I kept like looking in the back seat of my yeah. car. I came home, I went to let, you know, I came into the house, I said hi to my dogs and Chris, and then I went to let the dogs out, out front. And we have glass windows on either side of the door. I, I was standing on the porch, I heard a knock on the glass window, I turned around and it looked like Chris looking at me like this through the glass window. So I opened up the door and, you know, like to say, what? He should have been right there, but he wasn't there. So I yelled for him and he was upstairs. So then I told him, oh my God, I just saw something. There was like a doppelganger or something right in. Now, I, I do have to tell you that earlier, Chris in the basement was working out one day, saw what he thought was me, walk through the basement into the back room. He said I was wearing a a gray hoodie sweatshirt, but I wasn't. I was at my store that day. And then when he went to look to into the room where I was, there was a fire in the wall. A random fire. Yeah. The wall was on fire that not near anything electrical, not, there was no reason. It was just random. Yeah. A random fire in my house. So whoever my doppelganger was, that was a good thing because it made Chris look and mm-hmm. put out the fire. Yeah. But, um, so I saw Chris this night, his doppelganger. He came downstairs. We walked through the house because I swore there was another third party in the house. Yeah. And there was nobody there. And this is the same night as the creepy feeling you felt in the store. Yes. Okay. Yeah. This was like hours after yeah. I felt like I was being followed. Mm-hmm. And the same day that I saw Chris being right. followed. Okay. So Chris went to go back upstairs. He got to the platform, like our steps go up, then there's a little platform and a window that you can look out, and then they go up again. He stopped at the platform. I watched him stop at the platform and just like kind of freak out. And Chris never believed in ghosts until he met me and knew that I had abilities Mm -hmm. and I was able to see things that could validate that I was telling him the truth. This guy has seen a lot of ghosts now that, um, now that he's around you, right? (laughs) He stopped. He was freaking out. He said, I said, what's wrong? He said, I just saw the the witch from Snow White. He explained it exactly how I said right. it. Right. But he, I never told him what I saw. Right. This is on his own. That's how he described it. He saw what looked like the witch from Snow White walk across the window, which is impossible because it's two stories up. You can't walk across the window. Yeah. It was really scary. So... I, I was freaked out. I locked the door. I go to turn off the porch light. We had, you know, a system when we locked up at night. We turned up off the porch light. We turned off the light in the foyer and we go upstairs. I got to the landing to go upstairs and all the lights went back on. So I started screaming, whoever's fucking with me, <laughs> you better leave because this is my house. Mm-hmm. 
So I go back down. I turn off the lights. I go to go back upstairs. I get to the landing. They turn back on. So Chris is like, forget it. Leave them on. You know, Mm -hmm. we go upstairs. We go to bed. I kind of didn't sleep. He kind of didn't sleep. Right. But we would drift off and on. All of a sudden, Chris wakes me up scared shitless. And I have to add that Chris was a combat engineer in Desert Storm. He fought hand to hand, gun to gun, you know, enemies. It takes a lot to scare this guy. Right. But he was like, wake up, wake up. He heard on the other side of the bathroom door what sounded like shackles, like dragging and banging on the door. Now, I do it. I forgot to tell you something else about my store. It was used during the Underground Railroad, Mm -hmm. and no one had been in that space in a very long time. And we discovered it when we lifted a portion of the floor. Okay. No one told us about it. We accidentally, when we were painting, found Found a portion of the floor that opened up. And then we went into it and it was a room. And was this underground? Or yeah. So? Okay. It, it was underground. It probably attached at one mm-hmm. point to other areas, other houses. But it sounded like shackles. Okay. We went into the, the bathroom. I opened up the door and I have a mobile that was hanging in the bathroom that was chakras. It was a bunch of, I still have it, but it's just a bunch of chakra crystals Mm -hmm. that are hanging all different colors. When I went in there, they were tied in knots, tied like, like a human being with hands took the time to tie them. We were super, super freaked out. Mm -hmm. There was really nothing I could do but start screaming, I don't know who you are, but you're in the wrong space, Yeah. okay? (laughs) You're dead. I'm alive. He's alive. Get out. I don't care where you go. You can't stay here. I mean, I was just screaming the way that I was taught to do because I did... um, I I had to go to someone who had to teach me when I got my store because it was all the time. Right. Constantly ghosts. It was ridiculous. There were things I couldn't touch. It was crazy. There's antiques upstairs. Um, She actually taught me how to turn it off and how to make them leave me alone if I want. So I'm running around screaming like, you know, if you're, if they were physical, I, I'd be screaming, I'm about to kick your ass. Like, right. get out of my house. Yeah. So um, we, we had turned on the light of the bedroom because we were both terrified. Right. Okay. And we, right before we turned on the light of the bedroom, I forgot this part. What terrified us was there were these white lights They came out of the bathroom, shot across the bedroom ceiling, went through the bedroom door. We both followed it, opened up the door, and then went down the hall and into my son Jason's bedroom. When it went into his bedroom, our cat, Twinkles, came out of the bedroom, like bothered by it, sat in the middle of the hallway, real straight, and scared the shit out of both Chris and I because it was not our cat. It was like she she took on like almost like a uh, human... Uh, face. It was her face, but it it wasn't her. Like she was projecting an energy that was not a cat. And she then started purring really, really loud. So then I went, that's when we went, turned on all the lights. And this is like, when you say like, 
lights were shining. Was it like spotlights kind of like going through the house? But like Bubbles. Think of big bubbles. Uh-huh. Like if you were blowing bubbles and they had lights in them. Okay. They glow and they are just shooting through like flying through, through the house. The house. Okay. We went, turned on the lights. When I turned on the light in our bedroom, we first of all had a, a, a ceiling fan, which makes a noise, you know, yeah. like a fan. All of the sudden, the noise, the fan kept spinning. There was no noise. You couldn't hear any noise. Mm-hmm. It was weird. And our um, thermostat, which is digital, started just going crazy and going up and down and up and down and like making weird, like not numbers. It was very bizarre. I don't want to freak you out. No, you're fine. (laughs) No, I actually, I just saw uh, a white light go across right there. But (laughs) don't be freaked because... That is not a bad thing okay, good. to have white light around mm-hmm. you, you know? Yeah. White is good. and It was showing that it's good energy here. I, I do believe that. It was just kind of like mm-hmm. giving me a, yeah, there's energy everywhere. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And now for a quick commercial break and a word from our sponsor. Nutrafol has been my absolute favorite supplement recently. It is the number one dermatologist recommended hair growth supplement brand, and it is physician formulated with 100% drug-free ingredients. I try my best to incorporate a plant-based lifestyle, but also trying to make sure that I get in all of my vitamins and nutrients that I need for healthy skin, healthy nails, and especially, most of all, healthy, thick, long, beautiful hair. Whether you're dealing with stress or just anything else in life, Nutrafol's new women's vegan hair supplement knows how to address all of the problems. Their vegan supplement takes a whole body health approach to help you feel better, and look better in that exact order. Hair thinning is more common than you think. I've experienced it. A lot of my friends have experienced it. And I'm still young. I'm only 25 years old, turning 26. And it's a scary thing. No one wants thinning hair. Everybody wants thick, beautiful, model, superstar hair. And the way that I have helped fix that and just kind of fill in those empty patches or just the thinning pieces around my face is with Nutrafol's vegan hair supplement. I'm not kidding you. I've probably been using it for consistently, might I mention, because consistency is key. But I've been using their supplement for about, I would say, two and a half, three months now. And right around my hairline, I am starting to see little baby hairs grow in. They're really tiny. They're only like an inch, inch and a half long. But they are there. They're growing in. I never had those before. I'm proud of my baby hairs. And I'm so excited because Even though I have extensions, it's really important that around my face is full and that when I wear my hair in a ponytail, it doesn't look thin. And now I know that I'm on my way to promoting healthy hair growth and having thicker, stronger hair overall. Nutrafol's newest vegan formula is designed for women 18 and up who live a plant-based lifestyle and are experiencing any type of hair thinning. Some of the most common root causes of hair thinning can be metabolism, stress, nutrition, and Nutrafol's supplement is designed to target all of those things. Take the first step to visibly thicker, healthier hair. For a limited time, Nutrafol is offering our listeners $10 off your first month's subscription and free shipping when you go to Nutrafol.com and enter the promo code INSANE. Find out why over 4,000 healthcare professionals recommend Nutrafol for healthier hair. Nutrafol.com, spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L.com, promo code INSANE. That's Nutrafol.com, promo code INSANE. Now back to the episode. This, this night, though, in my house was so terrifying that... um I, it really did change my life and we bought a lot of sage. I had to do a a whole bunch of rituals. I had to call people and look things up and I did everything you possibly do to try to, you know, clear the house. My house is definitely clear. Mm -hmm. However, I do have visitations. Mm -hmm. I have visitors and, um, my kids were friends with a boy named Anatoly who was killed tragically in a very bad car accident when he was 14. 
He used to hang out at my house. He used to have a really good time at my house. And uh, my son Michael's bedroom used to be in the basement. And now I I rent that room to people. Multiple people have mm-hmm. lived there. Everyone who has been in that room has seen Anatoly. Really? Yeah. And when Chris first moved in, my kids still lived with me. Ray still slept with me because of um, she was terrified of the ghost in her room yeah. that had very large lips that came out of her closet and talked to her and said things that words that didn't make sense. Mm-hmm. But um, so Chris originally, when he first moved here, he moved here from Pennsylvania. He moved into the basement, into Michael's old room, because Michael had moved out to college. And he was sitting there one night and saw a human figure look around the the door way, like look in at him. And it was it had no face, he had no um skin. It was like just red and yellow and blue colored mm. lights. That made up a human figure. Right. But he knew that it was Anatoly. Now, Chris never had any of this before knowing me. Right. He knew that it was Anatoly. He came upstairs and told me that he knew that Anatoly's father died also, and that he died in a train accident, which was real. Mm -hmm. He knew all this stuff. Since then, Anatoly visits often. I have pictures of Anatoly. He still hasn't changed. He's still 14 years old. Um, But Ray was actually with me when we went to a store one time. And this is the first time that anything like this has ever happened to me. And I will say that even though I've been psychic my entire life, um, I think after my accident, it did get much stronger. And when I got my store, it got like a little bit overwhelming because I really didn't understand a lot of things that were happening to me. And even like how to control it, like you said. Right. Yeah. And um, when we were buying things for my store, Ray and I went to another store to look at this lady's jewelry. And I went into like some kind of weird trance and I didn't even feel like it was me talking when I spoke. And I was seeing all kinds of strange things that happened there. And I saw I saw a mean man who smelled like alcohol try to hurt a woman in a barn with a pitchfork. And I saw her screaming and crying. And I didn't know what to do about it. And then I saw this boy who drove off the side of the road. He was alive for a while. He laid in his car. He knew he was going to die. And he kept thinking about his dog, which was a golden retriever. And he kept thinking that, you know, like everybody else was going to understand. But he was worried about how his dog was going to feel about this accident that he was in. And I almost like couldn't really speak. It was very weird. Like, like you were just seeing all, it was like a vision kind of thing. You were seeing. Yes. It? Okay. I couldn't really talk. I was just having like uh, a videos, mm. videos playing in my brain right. and I couldn't like really. Of, like someone process. else's life. Yeah. 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 So it was shortly after that, that I went to um, this place downtown called Breathe Bookstores And I went there to look for books and I met this woman, Stephanie Tarr, who is also a psychic and we spoke and she, you know, told me to come on out and speak to her and she got me all relaxed and she said, girl, you are a clairvoyant bus that doesn't ever open the door to let everybody out. It's like I've got this beacon that says, 
okay, I can, I understand. I'll see you. I'll see you. I'll see you. I'll talk to you. But I never know how to say, okay, leave me alone. Right. And so she did teach me some exercises where I could close my mind and tell them to leave me alone and get them to go away. She made me understand that my energy is at a different frequency than a lot of other people's energies. And maybe it's because of my accident. Maybe it's because of my belief in mm-hmm. what I can do. Right. But I can act at a different frequency and see things in a different frequency than other people can with their brains. When Ray was also in a very, very bad accident, and I do have to say, when I was in my accident, I was 19 years old, and um, when they asked me how old I was, I said I was 14. It was October, and when they asked me what month it was, I said that it was June. Now I have a daughter, and she's 14, and it's June. And she's in a horrible, horrible, yet similar accident. She has the same brain issues. I I mean, I saw her skull. Yeah. It was split open. She didn't know what was going on for a long time. She spent a year when she was 14. Instead of going to school, she had to go to occupational therapy therapy. Uh, speech therapy, vestibular therapy, because she couldn't balance. Her her brain was so knocked off kilter. During that time, she had very bad concussion. The first night I brought her home, they told me to wake her up every couple of hours. I never had to wake her up because her friend Megan kept waking her up. Megan had passed away like two years prior of cancer, she was 16. Mm -hmm. And I guess she was there. And Ray had a very vivid dream. I still can think about it because it kind of freaked me out. She woke up and she told me that Megan was there and told her that she was not supposed to die, and she was kind of angry at her, and she needed to get her act together and heal. Like, she was saying all these really strange things about Megan. Also during that time, we had a picture of Megan in Ray's room, and every time we walked by it, it would fly off the shelf. Like, not to give us a scary feeling at all, but to let us know that she's still there. She's still watching out for her. I don't want to give away too many of Ray's stories, but (laughs) Ray had a lot of very, very real things happen to her right after her brain injury. So I'm here to say, as her mother, anybody that doesn't believe a story that Ray told about what Mm -hmm. she saw, believe it because she saw it. As far as Ray goes and knowing things was when my dad died, where we were supposed oh, to go, right. we were supposed to go to where are we supposed to go? Knobles. Yeah, Knobles Amusement Park. For her birthday. Right. And then I think I, did I, she, te- did your you text mother, me before I? No, your mother. You knew. Your mother called me okay, so at maybe four you o'clock know. in the morning. Right, it was early. And told me that your father had passed away. And she said, it was Ray's birthday. And she said, don't say a word to Ray. Just go about the day, say that Devora has a stomach bug, go about, you know, just, just don't tell her. So I I didn't tell her. Because I was supposed to go. With, right, yeah. right. You were supposed to come with us. So we went to Knoebels, we, we met my parents, went with us, and um, we stopped for lunch. And as we were sitting there, all of the sudden, Ray said to me, did Devorah's dad die? Mm-hmm. And I said, yes. How did you know that? And she said, I, I don't know. I just know. I just have a feeling that he died. Mm-hmm. She just yeah, did. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, there's just feelings that we get. You don't mm-hmm. know why. Right. You know? You just like, no, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we've, we've had a lot of 
very strange experiences together. But we did, when we went on a cruise once with my parents, I was like being stalked by this woman who I didn't know. She had really long hair. She was super, super skinny. And um, she had a, she kept showing me a stick with smoke coming out of it. That's mm. all I could make right. out. And um, we, at a, when you're on a cruise, you eat dinner with other people that you don't know. Yeah. So we had been on the cruise for a couple of days and we got to know the people. And I just really, really felt like this lady had something to do with this guy, Alan, that was sitting with us. So I asked him if he like knew any women with really long hair that passed away. And he, he was with a woman that I thought was his mom. It wasn't his mom. It was his aunt. Mm -hmm. His mom had just passed away. That's why they were together on this cruise. And the long stick was she used to put her, she smoked cigarettes and she put them in a holder, like a cigarette holder. Uh -huh. And she would smoke like that. Yeah. That was the long stick. Right. But um, another story I do have, I want to backtrack and talk about Anatoly okay. for a second because I forgot to tell you something very vital about that. The weekend that Anatoly passed away, he was away at dance camp. He was a dancer in New York. My kids were away with their father and I was going with my friend to drop their child off at a sleepaway camp in Virginia. And we were taking turns driving mm -hmm. and I wouldn't drive at night. So I was only going to drive during the day. So it was yeah. the first, we had just gotten started. We had just like gotten into Virginia and all of the sudden I saw in my head a green dump truck. Like I felt like we were going to die. Like we were going to get in a car accident with this head on green dump truck. And it terrified me. I was so scared. I could not drive. I couldn't drive anymore. Mm -hmm. So when we got back, um, my friend Susan called and this was before we had cell phones. We had old school mm -hmm. house phones. And I answered the phone and she was crying. And she said, I don't know if you've turned on the news. Did you turn on the news? Have you heard about Anatoly? It was on the news. Anatoly had just been killed that day. He, he was in a car. The driver of the car tried to change lanes and went to go around a car and went head on into a green dump truck, and everybody was killed. Everybody. But That's crazy. That was the first time that I had an experience with something actually happening at the same time that I was seeing it. Yeah. And I, I started to pay more attention to things that I – like was getting things in my dreams and stuff like that. I mean, in the meantime, I was seeing ghosts all the time. Chris and I went to Williamsburg and we decided to take a ghost tour so we would know where all of the good spots were. And then after it was over, we actually hid under a, this huge tree and we waited for everybody to leave and for everybody to lock up because we wanted to do our own mm -hmm. ghost tour. While we were under that tree, I saw a man hanging from the tree. I saw a, a man with a noose around his neck mm -hmm. hanging there. So this was before uh, cell phones. Mm -hmm. We had a camera with us. I started taking pictures. And did it show up on the camera? It did. I have a picture of a man hanging from a tree with a noose around his neck. So stuff like that, like that, what, like, it, okay, so if somebody was just like there during the day or even there at the same time as you and didn't see it, or maybe if they were there at the same time, they would see it. But like on another night, if you took pictures and it wasn't there, but when you were there, you took pictures and it was, does that just mean that you think that that specific person that died 
wanted themselves to be seen, do you think? I'm not I'm not sure. Yeah. It could be because of my frequency of energy. Right. The fact that I was in in that area under that tree. Yeah. It it brought that out. That out. Right. Okay. You know? Because it wasn't just him hanging. There was also mists Mm -hmm. like around him, different all all kinds of different energies. Right. But during that little um ghost tour that we Mm -hmm. took, I everything that I saw, I was able to take a picture of. Wow. I saw a woman wearing a red dress holding a basket of flowers. I think I've seen that picture. Yeah, yeah. It's my famous picture. Like it's the best ghost picture. I've ever seen that anyone ever has taken still to this day. And that was in Williamsburg. That was in Williamsburg. Now, I have to tell you also that I do believe that the frequency that I am in um, causes me to see just paranormal things that maybe other people can't see. I've seen a UFO several times and um, not always in the same place. The first time I saw one was with Chris and we were driving back from my parents' old house. My father was really sick and there was a lot of things that happened towards the end of his life as well. That's um, a lot of energy things like... I just have to backtrack. He had a situation one night where he had fallen and they called 911 and he told me that there was a time period that his face got super hot. He could see himself being worked on. He could see a a white light coming out of the closet door and shining on his face. And he knew that he was dead, but he wanted to go back. Right. And he kept wanting to go back and he felt himself go back. That night after everything was gone and everything, there was a piece of furniture in a, in the bedroom ne- across the hall from them. That was a piece of wall furniture, like a whole bookcase mm-hmm. that just wasn't against the wall anymore. Like, I know that the energy, whatever energy was in that house that night, Mm -hmm. it was so intense. It moved a piece of furniture away from the wall. I don't know what it was, but thank you. Saved my dad. Right, yeah. But one night when we were leaving, we were at a red light, and all of a sudden we saw in the sky what looked like a headlight of a car And then it got closer and closer and closer. And then it just kind of like dropped into the trees. And we both freaked out. We couldn't find it. So Chris saw it too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Chris... Chris saw, Chris has seen every, every UFO I've seen. I make him see it with his own two eyes. So that was the first time. The second time, I, I used to be a bartender at the American Legion Everybody that was in that bar it has served for the government. They're very honest. They all have very trained eyes. Mm-hmm. Okay. I was out back one night and I saw this huge light in the sky. I ran back in. I told everybody that was in the bar and everybody ran outside. I've got pictures. We don't know what it was. It was definitely something that didn't belong there. It wasn't a star. (laughs) Right. It's something that didn't belong there. Yeah. Okay. Last summer, I saw a UFO six times in the back of my house, in the sky, in the same spot, okay? Mm -hmm. Um, Chris has seen it. My friend Michael Davis has seen it. My neighbor, Rodney, has not only seen it, 
but actually got up one time to go to the bathroom at three o'clock in the morning and saw it hovering above my house. It's a light of different colors. Mm -hmm. It moves around and dances in one spot in the sky. It turns blue, red, green, yellow, all these different things. Sparkles fly out of it. And it feels good. Yeah. Like when I see it, I feel really good mm -hmm. about it. And like it's um, like a safe feeling, not like a dark yeah, feeling. Yeah. Yeah. And last year, after I saw it like twice, I started being able to tell Chris during the day when it was going to come back at night. I knew during the day I could feel it. I felt that it was there, like it was still there. We just couldn't see it. Mm -hmm. But we had to wait and we would see it later at night. And I I have videos of it. You know, I've I'm working with MUFON. I'm working with an astrophysicist. Like it's a actual thing that is coming out of the sky. Yeah. So this year, Chris bought me a telescope. I saw it again. I've already seen it twice this year. I um, I took a video of it with by putting my phone up to the telescope. Can you see it? Like, can you see it better when you're looking through the telescope? Like, can you see it more clearly? You can see it. It's it's harder to keep your eye on it because it's it's so um, tiny. It's dancing okay. around super yeah. fast. You know what I mean? Right. Without the telescope, all you see is just like something spinning, something okay. moving. But with the telescope, it's very minute and changing these crazy, crazy colors. So what do you think? Do you think it's a UFO or do you think it I don't think it's a UFO okay. at all anymore. I think it's a portal uh -huh. to another dimension. And I do think that it's spirit. Yeah. I don't think it's aliens. Mm -hmm. I, I really do believe that it's some kind of spiritual, emotional... Um, feeling that's coming out of there. I don't know what it is. Yeah. I really, I, I've never really been one for. My brother's a doctor, but I am not a big science person. Yeah. But as I've gotten older and I've gotten more in tune with what the things that I can do, I do believe that this thing in the sky is um, it got me back in touch with my original two ladies that used to tell me all kinds of things. They're back. They tell me lots of things. But like in this time, whatever, 20 years or whatever it's been, you really, you never really I saw them or talked to no, them. So no. So they just recently came yeah, back. I was seeing started. all these other crazy ghosts. Okay. I mean, like I was... I was at Cafe Hun one day mm -hmm. eating lunch and I looked over and it looked like this chef, this exhausted, middle-aged, ill woman. She had a blue um, chef hat on and she had a red a handkerchief mm -hmm. around her neck and she was staring at me in an uncomfortable way that, like, she was staring at me like I was a weirdo, like I'm weird. And she made me feel so uncomfortable that I, I said to Chris, look at this lady. I turned to say that to her, to him. And when I said it, I looked back and she was gone. I was so freaked out I got up. There's no way a human being could move that right. fast, especially this exhausted lady. I got up. Ran right into the kitchen where she was standing. Mm -hmm. The kitchen was the size of this room. It wasn't very big. She wasn't in there. There was just two other people standing in the kitchen, washing dishes and doing stuff. And uh, I said, there, there there was a lady that was just in here. Um, and I described her. I started describing her. And the owner came over to me and she said, can we sit down, sweetheart? And we went, we sat down. And she said, tell me who you saw. So I told her what I saw. And she told me that she has people come in 
lots of psychics, lots of mediums. It's Cafe Hun. It's in a, you know, artsy area. Mm-hmm. Lots of people come in. And every time someone sees something, they've given her like a little tiny piece. Like I knew she was wearing a blue chef hat or, she, or they saw she was wearing a... But I saw an entire woman. I saw this whole woman. I don't know why. I don't know what she wanted. I knew she was exhausted. But those kind of things, like I don't know what she wanted. Mm -hmm. I don't know who she was. And I never saw her again. I just know that I was able to see this ghost. Well, for some reason, since I've been seeing this UFO, and I don't know why I'm connecting the two. They really don't connect. For some reason, I personally am connecting this thing in the sky with the fact that Ethel Rubenstein and Rosie McGurkey have told me things over the past couple years that are freaking me out and destroying my family because I know what I know is true. And I don't know if they believe me, but everything's coming true. Mm-hmm. And I... I'm not a politics person, but I did get a warning in 2018 about a president that was not going to work for America, but instead be for a red devil. And there is something in the earth that is like an orange and white and yellow light that squirts out from the center of the earth and the red devil. And and when I say a devil, I'm talking about a powerful, evil energy that is not a human, never was a human, never will be a human. Mm -hmm. It's just something that wants to take over the earth and own the earth. Yeah. And... I knew that the leader of, um, not just our leader, there's going to be a lot of people that are involved in this that's going to make the Red Devil uh, get um, happening. It's going to happen. And in, in 2024, I saw, now I saw this um, in 2018, but I, but I saw the year 2024, it was written in yellow digital numbers that year, 2024. Mm -hmm. I saw it on top of soldiers in brown uniforms that are going to be in the streets of America, unless I'm going to another country. I know that I I'm going to be as close to a soldier in 2024 as I am to you right now. And it's not going to be good. There's something um, about the year of 1942. And I did see prior to the Ukrainian war, I saw it, told a lot of people about it. Now it's happening. But I saw it, mm-hmm. and I I knew that it was going to reflect the year 19... There's going to be things that are going to reflect 1942, and the Jewish people are in a great deal... They're in danger. There's going to be 29,000 Jewish souls that are going to die at once. I know that. And it scares me. Mm -hmm. And this is what I got from Ethel Rubenstein, who was a Holocaust survivor, and Rosie McGurkey, who died in the Holocaust. For some reason, I'm very connected to these two women at this point in time. I feel like they maybe were at rest and came through this portal Mm -hmm. to connect with me. I don't know. 
I'm not happy about it because it's kind of scary stuff. Right, because it's like, what can you do about all the information? It's just like, you know it's right. Yeah. Not a thing. Right. Argue all day with people. Mm -hmm. Okay? (laughs) That's it. (laughs) Yeah. I'm telling everybody, anybody that's listening, I know things. I do. Everything that I say out loud is going to happen. I won't say it out loud unless I know for sure from these two women that I should verbally say something out loud. Right. And they and like you said, they've had other things that they've said that have confirmed to come true. Everything. Okay. I've never said anything yeah. that didn't come true. When I met Chris, I was tell, telling him about my abilities. Um, he didn't believe in any of them. And... I was looking through pictures. He had him handed me a picture. And I, all of the sudden, I was like in this kitchen, this tiny little kitchen. And I saw like a house plant um, pinned on the wall. Like that's how it grew. Mm -hmm. Like it it like really covered with a lot of house plants. Mm -hmm. I saw a man who was a police officer and uh, um, he had a hat and he had like, I could see his hands as he was driving. And I started explaining all this stuff to Chris and it was, it was his grandfather and I could see his chair that he used to sit in and, and the uh, table and the ashtray that he used to use. Everything was super clear. And then I I understood that his grandfather um, put me in Chris's life for yeah. a reason. And through Chris, I started to understand that like sometimes these, these ghosts that come to me that I don't know anything about, they do make me um, cross paths sometimes with people for different reasons. Mm -hmm. That guy on the cruise, we still talk to his family. You know what I mean? And you do get to, it's kind of like, it's kind of like watching a movie and knowing how different parts of it are going to end. Yeah. But I don't really, I don't really know how what I see is going to end. I just know that I have a, a very serious feeling of severe desperation that I have to project to anybody that will take me seriously and hear me and listen. Because if everybody keeps um, just people need to start asking questions right. about themselves and about what's going on. Mm -hmm. Because there's a lot more going on. And when I say a lot more going on, I mean more than the regular human being could could understand. It's got more, I'm not trying to talk politics, but it's energies. It's not people. It's it's actual energies that are are, uh, at work here. And they're not good energies at Mm -hmm. all. They're not good at all, but they're old and they've been around a very, very long time. Mm -hmm. I do have another story that I wanted to tell you that just, I forgot about, uh, about things being around a a very long time. I, um, when I was going for help with closing my door and trying to, you know, I needed mm-hmm. people to teach me how to be a psychic because it got way worse yeah. as I got older. That's race future. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I had this one woman, she laid me down. She she is also a psychic. Her name is Genevieve. And she was telling me that I had um, a gift from another life that in another lifetime that I used to be a healer. And I used to take bad things that other people had, different illnesses. And in that lifetime, I would take through my hands and I would take away their illnesses, but I would keep them 
And they like were inside of my chakra in the middle of my, my area. And um, sadly, I do have various different strange bladder cancer, uterine cancer, cervical cancer, had them all. And my bladder cancer, I still have, it's a transitional cell and none of my doctors know why I have it because the kind of cell it is, um, is old men who smoke and live in Baltic states Mm -hmm. like Russia, you know, like where my ancestors are from, but I'm not, I'm from here. There's no real reason for it, but I do think that that's interesting. Mm -hmm. But while I was, um, while she had me like in this trance like state, I was in this, I guess I was buried and I was under the ground and I could see like, I couldn't make out faces, but I could see people above me on the grass. And then I like came out of the hole and I went all the way up and I was like in this field and I was surrounded by mountains and beautiful things. And I started flying through the mountains and I saw a like a cave and I knew that I lived in that cave. And then I landed on this big um, rock. It was a warm rock and the sun was shining on it. And I was, I was like tired and I felt like maybe I don't know. I felt sick, like I needed help, but I couldn't move. And then I saw this figure that was, he had no, he was a shadow Mm -hmm. person. He had no face, completely black, very thin. I knew his name was Paul. I knew that he loved me like loved me. I felt very in love with him, like overwhelm mm-hmm. happiness. And he, he made me feel more, um, energy. Like I got stronger yeah. when he came over to me. And what's strange is, um, the woman that was, that was doing this, she is a psychic And she later told me that she thought that in another lifetime, I may have been married to an artist, a French artist named Paul in the Renaissance times, who painted pictures of spiritual things like Jesus Mm -hmm. at the Last Supper. That's what he did. He painted visions and spiritual things. And he was my soulmate from another lifetime. I just wanted to add that. And so you saw him when you were in that like trance kind of thing. Yeah. When I was in that trance like state. So you believe in reincarnation, right? I believe a hundred percent in reincarnation. Okay. This is what I think. Okay. We are like butterflies. Okay. Mm -hmm. We have an energy that is inside of this temporary thing we call our body. Yeah, like a shell. Yeah, it is our shell. Mm -hmm. And um, when we're out of it is when we are truly free. Yeah. We need to learn things because life is definitely about school. And the next dimension is what's important. So where we are in the next dimension is totally going to be about the lessons that we learn in this one and how we treat others and the energy that we project. So if I'm desperately trying to teach people lessons because I feel like it's a form of love, whether they want to hear it or not. And it's kind of scary when I can't get through to people that I love and I don't, I I don't always get through to people that I love and it's sad because something real is going to happen to this planet 
and it has nothing to do with um, vehicles or gas stoves. Or, uh, it's nothing like that. Something really big is going to happen to this planet really soon mm -hmm. if we don't get our acts together as a whole on this planet and change the energy. Yeah. The energy right now is being exuded from every single person mm -hmm. and it's changing and shifting to a very bad red devil side. Well, I feel like in general too, like, I even, I mean, I always say this and people might think it's hypocritical because hypocritical, technically I'm on social media. But like I always say that I think social media has a lot to do with control mm -hmm. and even the government, everything. I just think yes. that like control even in that form is evil. So it's like it might not seem evil, but like any type of control over other people's minds because everybody should be open to have their own opinion and think clearly and freely. Yes. And I think that like the news and society and social media, all of that is so toxic and demonic in a way yeah. that even that is like that's a devil. Yeah. It, it, yes. It does, like I agree. It does it's feed it. It's feeding 100%. it. Like nobody it's, thinks, nobody's their own person and like thinks for themselves anymore. Everything is just this one thought. You know, it's interesting that you should say that because I do. I'm very different than a lot of other people where they only post things on Facebook because they want people to be impressed with mm -hmm. them and they're fake. Yeah. I, I put things on Facebook like desperate. Mm -hmm. Listen to me, okay? Right. <laughs> I don't go back. I don't care. I don't go on other people's pages. Yeah. I don't care. I'm too busy. I got a life. I got things to do mm -hmm. in real life, physically right. things to do in real life. So I don't really, um, not that I don't care, but I don't want to make social media uh, such an important part of my life mm -hmm. that I forget how to stand up for myself and think freely. And when when you have an instinct, when anybody alive has an instinctual feeling, it's hard to get rid of. Yeah. You know, when you feel scared, you're scared. You leave. You do something about it. You try desperately to make your feeling go away. Yeah. You know, my 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 feelings are like instinctual and I try to get people to understand them. Not everybody can understand them. That's sad. But I think the problem is that social media has poisoned people's minds to the point where they feel like they they have to be fake. They have to all look the same. Everybody is starting to become an animated cartoon. Mm -hmm. They're, the human race is in serious, serious danger. The human race, okay? Not, I'm not trying to get political, but if, if, if you try to do things to the way that nature has been created, if you try to alter nature, it's not going to work for you. Mm -hmm. Nature has a, an agenda, okay? And it goes with how the earth works. It's like getting a car and deciding that instead of filling it with gas and oil and, and taking care of it that way, you're going to fill it with water and expect it to run, you know, maybe it'll yeah. run for whatever. You might come up with something that makes it run for, but at the end of the day, you're destroying your car. Yeah. Okay. That's how I feel about the human race. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, no, it makes <laughs> and sense. And the only reason I'm saying it is because I, I see dead people. Right. I see desperate dead people. Okay. And I do believe that these two dead people that I used to see when I was little, that never bothered me my whole life. Mm -hmm. Um, that started up again last year are here for a purpose. I think they were at rest and mm -hmm. now they're at an unrest. Right. I, and I don't know why, uh, I'm not the only person with abilities 
that understands this. Yeah. However, society is so trained to call people like me a wackadoo Mm -hmm. and uh, a liar. And I don't care. You shouldn't. I don't. Because I sometimes feel like I'm smarter than the average person in other ways. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm not a, you know, I'm not a teacher. I'm not a scientist. I'm not a doctor or a lawyer. But I'm smarter than those people in a different kind of way. And you're also just more obviously way more in tune with yourself and with what's happening around you in real life and spiritually. Oh, yeah. So it's like, which is, I always think is just as important because you should always be in tune with that. Because if you're not, then you're just going to get lost in yeah. whatever's happening around I, you. I, I do think that the cancers that I've had in my lifetime have taught me a lot of very valuable, important lessons. Mm-hmm. It's changed the way I think. The things that are important to me are not important to other people. Right. And, and that's fine. I don't care. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, sometimes it, it, I try to mind my own business, but I also try to get out messages that I might get for people and it yeah. comes out the wrong way. Right. But in my heart, I'm a good person and I'm trying to be a savior of mankind. Yeah. I I love everybody. I really do. I would like everybody. This is what I really would love. Mm-hmm. If everybody would get smart and wake up and stop talking to each other and instead get in tune with what they're hearing in their own yeah. thoughts and minds and Well, yeah, because a dreams. lot of people don't spend enough time alone and, and like they aren't comfortable enough to do so. Right. So I think it's just about being in tune with yourself and spending that time alone to and being open even to yourself, not just to what's happening around you. Right. Yeah. Right. And, and you should pay attention to dreams because mm-hmm. – Yeah, I agree. A lot of times – Spirit will visit you in your dreams mm-hmm. and they they don't want to frighten you. So they come to you in, in when you know in that form, in the form of a dream. But they're trying to get a message across. Ray and I had the same dream on the same night after my father passed away, a little while after he passed away. I dreamt that I got in my car and he was sitting in the passenger seat and messing with the visor and I looked at him and I was like, you're dead. What are you doing here? Why are you here? You're not supposed to be here. You're dead. And he said, I know. I just wanted to say hi. Mm -hmm. That was the whole dream. Yeah. I told Ray about the dream. She had the same dream. She was on a bus. She got on the same night. Mm -hmm. She got on a bus, saw my dad at the back of the bus, waving for her to come sit next to him. She walked over to him and said, oh my God, I thought you were dead. Mm -hmm. And he said, I am. I just wanted to say hi. But they say hi. Right. And you should pay attention to it. Mm -hmm. And with modern technology, I'm thrilled that a lot of the ghosts that I see, I have on film. I know. I've captured a lot of them. I'm so excited to see that. I want to see the picture. I, I went to a cemetery once with Chris And um, the cemetery behind my store, actually. Mm -hmm. And he had walked over to one area. And all of a sudden, I felt like, no, 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 no. Don't go there. And I I screamed, don't go there. Just stop. Don't go in that area. And then I just started taking pictures. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what was in that area. But when we got back, because that was a camera, um, in the picture, you can see a ghostly hand up like a stop like don't go there you know like saying the same thing i am there was a ghost next to me telling chris don't go there yeah but through me right. you know what i mean yeah but everybody that doesn't believe in ghosts they need to start believing in ghosts yeah. it's absolutely real absolutely that's for sure real. shadow people i do believe could be one of two things they could be spirit that are trying to talk to you. They could be aliens Mm -hmm. that are just spying on us and trying to help us. 
I know they're real. They're yeah. definitely real. I've seen them. Um, my son has seen them. My 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 children have had multiple experiences, and even though they try to blow it off and deny yeah. it, when they get older, they're gonna embrace it yeah. and appreciate it. Well, like even too, like if people don't believe that's just on them, there's plenty of people that know it's real or have experienced things like the people that you've met and that have helped you, um, which obviously was important for you because if not, it would just be like you said, overwhelming. You wouldn't be able to control it, which is just because it's. I was telling Ray in the car, I was like, I feel like I remember you saying a while ago, it's almost like you have these like invisible antennas yeah, and it's just like they all come to you because it's like they know that you're just like you're open to that and you're like available but it's important that you have that like boundary and that wall of like, no, not now. Or like even right. like you can't come in my house type of thing too. It's it's just like tuning into a radio. Yeah. And sometimes, you you know, you'll get a, a station mm-hmm. and then if you don't want to, you know, you just yeah. change it. Right. Just turn it off. You don't yeah. want to hear it. Yeah. But I also learned in this, this was a very valuable, very valuable lesson. In this state right now, alive, we are more powerful than any visiting spirit, good or bad, individually, and we do have the power to change anything. We have the power to change the energy. If the energy is bad, we need to start giving good energy. If a spirit scares you, you need to tell it to get away, get out of my space, get out of my life they'll leave. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's really like just life. I do believe that your mother has instinct 100%. I we've never talked about it, but I know she's got the right energy. She definitely um she's got it. Yeah. She knows when she feels something, yeah, believe she, her because yeah. I do think she's right. Yeah. And that's the thing too. I think that's just another example kind of like less on the intense go side, but just like you were saying before, just trusting your gut instinct and right. believing because it's there for a reason. Like we're meant to know when something doesn't feel right, you don't do it. Right. So it's more about energy yeah. than than ghosts. Right. It's just that ghosts come along with, with this yeah. frequency. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. That's wild. One thing I do know is that we don't know everything. Definitely not. There's a we lot. never will, I don't think. Right. And no. the people that act like they do, they're wrong. Mm-hmm. Usually, because no one ever actually knows. No. So Nobody knows. But that's crazy. I know. I love your stories. It's funny, because like, I know half of them. Like From when I was growing up, like we would always, I would right. always hear these. But I, it's crazy, because I always say, like I have such a bad memory now, but I remember all of those stories because they stick with you. It's like, it's crazy stories that like people right. would never believe, but like they're real and it's just, it's nuts. Were you, it's I wild. Remember, I knew like, were you with us in the car on the way home from school when that woman died in the accident? No, but I saw it, right? She was hanging out of the yeah, car. Yeah, I saw it too. Yeah, I saw it because I was leaving with my grandfather and we both saw it right. driving home. Right, that that was creepy. Yeah. That that happened right yep. in front of us. That yeah. was also very creepy. But I remember like the only one I don't think I knew was the witch one. But other than that, like I remember all these stories growing up and like even your store and stuff like that. So yeah, it's, the it's store, crazy. I didn't even go into yeah, all of the, the store stories was at the store. Yeah, that is, it's just, it's craziness. But it's funny because I always said that I wanted like a medium or a psychic on here or something like of, like along those lines. I think it would still be interesting to have somebody do like a reading for me on the show. But I like Rachel and I were literally on FaceTime and I was like, did you bring it up? I think Rachel brought it up. Oh, yeah. I was like, I need. Yeah. I was like, I need somebody to come on. And I think you mentioned your mom. And I was like, oh, my God, I have the best title. I talk to dead people because that's basically what you do. I really and it's, do. It's, yeah, it's nuts. I, but I love it. And it's like, I think it's something that I feel like, like you said, now it is becoming more talked about. There's so many movies, so many shows, but I feel like it's never really talked about in this setting. So right. it's interesting because I, even if you don't necessarily believe in it or haven't experienced it, it's so intriguing and interesting to hear about because not everybody experiences it and has your, I would say like abilities to, right. you know, to experience it. But I do think, I I do think that more and more people, mm-hmm. 
the more they accept it, yeah. the more in tune they're going to start getting. Right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's, there is some, some change is happening to this planet right now. Yeah. Something huge. Something's coming. Something's coming. Mm-hmm. I know it's got something to do with the center, cent- the center of the earth. There, yeah. I, I, like, I visually saw a crack mm-hmm. in our earth and energy coming out of it. Yeah. So we got to keep the energy good. Right. The energy coming out was good, mm-hmm. but this red devil energy wants that. And turn, he wants to turn it bad. Yeah. Cannot let it happen. No. We all got to be good. Good energy. White light. Yeah. Just, you know. Positivity. Always try to imagine yourself surrounded by a glowing white light. Yes. As protection. I've heard that before. Yeah. yeah. That's good. Well, you did amazing. And thank you thank so you. much for coming on here. This it's, was I'm, a pleasure. I, yes. I would love to come back anytime. Yes, thank you. I got you did lots amazing. Of stories. Thank you.